We're talking some big-time injuries and some big-time performances from the first week of the MLB season on today's Stinging Corners. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. Welcome to Dinging Corners, a Slab Stocks baseball podcast. I'm your host, Nate, and today we're going to recap opening week. So we had opening day last Thursday. It was an amazing time. If you're a Brewers fan like me, we had a walk-off win. Um, it was a less amazing time if you were a you know Nationals fan because you didn't play. And the Nationals have like 20 guys out for 20 is a, a stretch. But they have a bunch of guys out because of COVID protocols. Um and for every team in between, it's been amazing. It's been amazing for the Tigers and Akil Badu, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and we'll get to him a little bit later. So what we're going to do today is we are going to take do a little bit of injury news because there is some injury news. And then we are going to talk about uh, one player from each division. So NL East, AL East, NL Central, AL Central, you know, list goes on. And we're going to talk about one guy from each division that has kind of uh, been really good to start the year. Uh, I was going to do guys that have been really bad, but there's only so much I can harp on Kesson Hira for not having a hit yet uh, through seven games. So we decided not to do that. They're all still better hitters than me. So uh, I can't harp on them too bad if they can't hit. So we're just going to focus on the good guys today. All right. So 2021 opening week recap. Like we talked about in injuries. Injuries are obviously the big thing, the big, big thing happening this week. And obviously, Eloy was already injured before opening day. For some reason, he decided to go up for a robbed home run in a spring training game when he's not a good defender. And he hung his arm over the wall and tore his pectoral. Just one of the dumbest, one of the dumbest injuries I've ever seen in my entire life. Not only was he not going to rob the home run, but it was spring training. It did not need to happen. It did not need to happen at all. And so Eloy being out for five to six months, I was so high on him. So many other people were high on him. We were all very excited to watch him hit. He's one of the best young hitters in the game. Um, I was expecting really big things from him. I was kind of expecting him to lead the AL in home runs. That ain't going to happen now, now that he's out five to six weeks, but or five to six months. But toward that left pictorial, just a stupid move. And if you're looking at prices over here on April 1st, which is opening day, obviously he got injured before this point. But April 1st, they were there was three sales, I believe, for $61 average. And April 5th and 6th, there was also three sales, I believe, for a $66 average. Um, so the price has gone up a little bit between those sales. I expect that to go down. Pay attention to Eloy. Wait for people to kind of forget about him in two months, two and a half months. And then buy, 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 and you'll be golden. Uh, buy, I bet you could probably get them for forty bucks, maybe even thirty bucks, uh, depending on how far they drop. And then you just hold on to those bad boys and wait for them to come back, or wait for them to absolutely crush the ball next year and lead the AL in home runs. You'll be golden. The bigger injury, the soon-to-be face of baseball, I would say, Fernando Tatis. I don't know if you guys watched the video. It was on my story. It was all over Twitter. You could have seen it on LB Network. And he had a big follow-through on his swing because he always does, and he has a very violent swing. And he injured his shoulder when he was coming through. It was a left shoulder sublux subluxation, if I'm saying that correctly. And you never know if I'm saying stuff correctly. And what I understand is that is a partial dislocation of his shoulder. And then also along with that was a partial tear of his labrum in his shoulder. But apparently he didn't need surgery. He said he felt fine and could play. I don't know if I believe that because a tear in your shoulder, that's iffy. Um, we'll see what it does. I don't think it's on his throwing arm, so he should be good there. But interesting. He'll be out at least out at least 10 days because he's on the 10 day DL. I expect him to be out longer than that though. Um, I just don't see how he could come back from that in 10 days, especially with the partial tear of his labrum in his shoulder. Uh, if you're looking at prices on April 1st was opening day about around $275 average. 
for the card. And today, or yesterday, or two days ago, April 6th, $244 uh, was the last sale. Um, and that's with shipping. Now, the price kind of probably has been dropping steadily as, uh, you know, the excitement around him has been, I'm not, not the excitement, but like his stats and everything, you know, if he doesn't just absolutely dominate, there was no way he was going to keep up $325 top series two price, uh, PSA 10 prices like we saw after he signed his extension. And so some of this is probably just natural. And some of this is probably just a little bit of panic of him injuring himself and people wanting to move that money into somewhere else. If you are watching this, you know not to panic and not to panic sell when there are injuries. Hold on to them. And uh, especially a guy like Tatis, you don't want to sell Tatis now and then wake up 10 years from now and he's one of the best players in the game and you could have had one of those for cheap and had it in your collection for a long time or, you know, sold it later for a significantly more amount of money. Now, the question is, how high can it really get? It's not going to get to Mike Trout like $5,000 price range because there's just so many of them. There's so many of them. Pop Report comes in big with these new years, the Acunas, the Sotos, the Tatises, all those guys. And so, um, you know, there's not going to be like that high-end Mike Trout range, but still, you're going to look back in uh, like 10 years and say, wow, Tatis is great. I should have held on to him instead of selling him for $244 on April 6th after he, after he injured himself. So there's our little update for injuries, and now we have our divisional recap. So like I said, we're going to pick one player, from each division, so the AL East, we'll start with the AL East, and then go to the AL Central, AL West, NL East, NL Central, NL West, and one guy from each division that has kind of like blown the doors off of the early going here. And so let's start with the AL East, and that is Tyler Glass now. Now, you'll have the shorthand uh, notes here on the side. I'll read them off for those of you that are listening on podcast, and he's thrown 12 innings to a .75 ERA, not 1.75, not 2.75, not 3.75, but 0.75 ERA. He's given up five hits and two walks. So that's seven base runners in 12 innings, which is really good. And he's added 15 strikeouts. Um, the big thing for Tyler Glass now is that he added a slider this year. And it's a very good pitch, a very, very good pitch. And he's been using it 35% of the time. If he adds a third pitch, like he has this slider and he has command and he still has that like 70 grade fastball, watch out. He is going to become unhittable. And he is also probably going to become the AL Cy Young Award winner for this year. I would not, I wouldn't be shocked. In fact, I would bet on it that Tyler Glass now is going to be the AL Cy Young Award winner. And you saw what happened with Shane Bieber last year and his prices. Now imagine what's going to happen with Tyler Glass now. So if you're looking at his Bowman Cone price and BGS 9.5, uh, obviously the 9.5, 9.5, and then 9 on the surface here for the card we're looking at, you know, whatever. Um, it's not it's not the greatest subgrades in the world, but still BGS 9.5 for $225. That, to me, seems like a great deal. All things considered, this dude is about to blow up. He's already blowing up. And I'm telling you, I'm really feeling like Tyler Glass now is going to win a Cy Young this year. And you look at you look at uh, Shane Bieber, Tops Update Rookie PSA 10 last year's Tops Flagship Update Rookie PSA 10, $100. This is 225 for a BGS 95 Bowman Chrome Auto, which is a significantly better card. So get in while you can and maybe buy his tops cards, tops flagship, if you don't want to spend 225 on the Bowman Chrome. But at least get a few of Tyler Glass now and watch his race starts because this dude is incredible. On to the AL Central, and we've got two guys. So I said I was going to choose one, but had to do two. And the first one is Akil Badu if I am saying that correctly, and this is insane, this is insane, this is insane. So he's a Rule 5 pick, and for those of you that don't know what the Rule 5 pick is, if a guy is not on the 40-man roster and has been in the in the minor leagues for X amount of years, I believe it is um, five, after five years if you're not on the 40-man roster as a high school student, and four years as a college student, but maybe I am, maybe it's five and six, I don't really remember, but I think it's four and five four years for college and five years for high school. If you're not on the 40 man roster by then, then you become rule five eligible. 
And what that means is that another team can draft you in the Rule 5 draft, and they have to keep you on their 40-man roster for the entire season. If they do that, they then owe owe the team drafting that, so the Twins in this case, $100,000. And if they send them back, then the Twins owe them $50,000 or something like that. Um, I forget off the top of my head. So that's what the Rule 5 draft is. Um, It's a way for kids that aren't getting a chance in their own organization to go to another organization um, without having to be traded for and get a shot there. So a guy like Akil Badu, he gets a shot with the Tigers because they are rebuilding and they can take a flyer on a young upside kid like Badu. And so they grab him. The Twins do not protect him on their 40-man roster, so he's there to be grabbed. He was a second-round pick in 2016 by the Twins, so he's got pedigree, um, but he's never played above Abel. So you're talking rookie league A and then eight, like 27, 29 games of A-plus ball, never played in double-A, never played in triple-A, which makes his debut that much more amazing. In his very first pitch of his very first game, he hit a home run. Very first pitch he ever saw in the majors, he hit a home run. And this doesn't even count his spring training, which was incredible. In his second game, he hit a grand slam. Now, they were down by a ton. I think they were down like 15 to 1 at the time or 15 to 4. I don't remember what it was. But he hit a grand slam, which is crazy. And then in his third game, he got pinch He pinch ran. And then in the 10th inning, he hit a walk-off single. So three straight games, three amazing moments for Badu. And... um. Just something pretty incredible about that. Even if this story doesn't end up being a feel-good story all season long, the fact that it started off this way, pretty, pretty fun. Uh, he's hitting 455, 450, 455 average, 455 on base, and 11,000 or 1.182, 11,182 slugging in 11 at-bats. They are using him pretty sparingly. Um, they started him today. He got a triple. But they're using him pretty sparingly in the early going. He's not like a full-time starter by any means, but he might work his way up into that. Um, now, the one thing about him is, you know, he hasn't played above a ball. It seems like this is probably not going to keep going, you know. Uh, but you never know what happened last year in 2020 with the weird offseason. You don't know what he learned. You don't know what he changed. So there is potential that this is real. I just, I wouldn't bet on it. And um, it's, Rule 5 draft picks barely ever make an impact, right? And even the guys that do end up, you know, Odubel Herrera, where is he five years from now? Outside of his legal troubles, you know, he's not even on the Phillies roster. So, um, or five years from now, five, five, like five years ago, he got drafted, Rule 5 drafted, and now look where he's at. So it's a nice story, but it's not one that I think is going to keep up. And that makes this price here that you see on the screen for his Bowman Chrome first auto insane. So you'll notice on the left side, I've got a little note, $8 Bowman Chrome auto on January 10th, $8. Just the other day, one sold for $205, not a refractor, not a gold, not a blue, not a green, a base Akil Badu auto Bowman Chrome for $205. People are insane. Now, it's it's nice that he hit the home run to the opposite field, right? That is nice to see. When he makes contact, he hits the ball hard. And he's been spreading it around. So that's nice to see. But $205 for a dude who's had 11 at-bats above A-plus ball in his entire career is bonkers to me. Absolutely bonkers. It's bonkers to you guys, I imagine. Um, I hope... I hope if you are watching this, you are not spending $205 on a Kiel Badu because if you are, you and me and anybody else that is watching this, we clearly haven't learned from Aristides Aquino. You remember Aristides Aquino? Reds outfielder came up, hit the cover off the ball for a month and a half, hit like 11 home runs, 13 home runs in his little cup of tea. Where is he now? You know, he's still on the major league roster, but he's not doing anything. Those card prices have dropped. His top flagship cards aren't worth anything. And so you look at a guy like Arstidis Aquino, and you look at a guy like Akil Badu, and I'm not saying Badu is going to become Aquino. I'm just saying that there should be some real hesitancy towards paying prices 
uh, even like $25 for a Bowman Chrome Auto of him, let alone $205. So it's absolutely absurd. People have too much money where they can just go spend $205. I'm sure they think they're getting the next big guy. They're not. They're not. They're throwing away their money. And it's sad to see because there's a lot of guys in the minors that are really good, that are much better and like legitimate prospects that are legitimate number one opportunity overall prospect pedigree. And they don't even cost $205. Um, maybe not for an auto, but for other cards, right? So, Akil Badu, great story. People are going to lose so much money on him. Next in the AL Central is another great story, and that is Yermin Mercedes. If I'm saying that correct, Yermin? Yermin? I don't know how to say his name. Um, but it's a great story. He went 8 for 8 to start the year. 8 for 8 to start the year, which is absolutely insane. I've never seen it before. Before he got out in his last at-bat of his second game, he's hitting 565 with a 583 on base and an 826 slugging and 23 at-bats. The thing about him is that he's a DH only because it says catcher on the card that you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, but he's a DH only. Look at him. He's 28 years old, he's 5'11", and he's 245 pounds. The bat has never been in question. If you look at his scouting reports, the bat has never been in question. He's always had a great hit tool. He's always had good power. This is not, I mean, obviously you're not going to hit 565 with a 583 on base and a 826 slugging for the rest of the year, but the fact that he's doing well is not shocking. The problem is that he isn't playable at any defensive position. He has no arm, he has no speed, and his defense is not great. He He's not going to play catcher. He's not going to play first. You can't sneak him in an outfield corner. So he literally is, a, like, he, you can't pull an Eloy with him, right? So he is a DH. Now, the problem with that is they have Jose Abreu, they have uh, Andrew Vaughn, and they have Eloy when he comes back. One of those guys is going to have to play DH, right? So where is Mercedes going to go from here? I don't know. Um, but the bat is really good. He can't play defense. And because of that, he doesn't really have that much playing time in the future. And even this year with Eloy being out and him being able to be full-time DH, any NL team play, he, they play, he's not going to get to play, right? So you're going to take out maybe 30 games a year from being able to play. And so uh, that really limits his value. And while you see this card over here, the 70 years of baseball autograph from Topps, the 2021 Top Series 170 Years of Baseball Tops autograph. That's his only card. Outside of Tops Now cards, this is his only card. And people are paying. Last sale was for $160 shipped, which is insane. But also, you got to remember, if it's his only card, there's only so many of them. And if you want a card of him, you're going to have to pay that price. So it's not like absurd like the Akil Badu where there's a ton of Bowman Chrome autos. And it doesn't make sense. This, there's not that many cards. There's literally just this. It's just an auto. And there's probably still a lot more to be pulled, so there's not that many out there. Um, so the price makes sense, but I still wouldn't pay that because while it's a good story and while the bat has never been in doubt, they're going to play Eloy, they're going to play Andrew Vaughn, and they're going to play Jose Abreu, and Mercedes is left out to dry. So good story for the right now. In the future, a problem. Moving on to the AL West, and we got... Nate Lowe, not to be confused with Brandon Lau, who spells his name the exact same way and was on the race last year along with Nate Lau. But different last names is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Different pronunciations of the last names. So Nate Lowe is now a Ranger. He got traded in the offseason. He wasn't getting playing time in with the race, and so they traded him, got some more prospects into their pr prospect pool, and they moved a guy that they weren't going to play to a team like the Rangers who could take a flyer on a guy like Nate Lowe, and see what he can do. And so far, so good. He's hitting 348 with a 375 on base and a 783 slugging in the early going, 23 at-bats, and three home runs. Um, really nice to see. I have not seen him play once because I don't know about you, but if I'm scrolling through MLB.tv, right, I'm not going to turn on a Rangers game. There's, I have literally zero, zero interest in watching the Rangers, even with Nate uh, Lowe. But that being said, you know, I don't expect him to run high averages. I expect him to be in the 250, 260 range. Um, but he could definitely 
fulfill that promise of a bunch of home runs, which uh, could be interesting. But the Rangers already have a guy like that. His name's Joey Ga Gallo. You know, ton of home runs, low averages, meh, decently higher averages now, maybe 270, 280. Um, but uh, not a guy I'd invest in. And so you're looking over here, and I grabbed his Bowman Chrome Gold Auto from 2019. And it, somebody paid $305 for it. Now, on the surface, a gold of a guy doing pretty well and a former top prospect and a hitter at that, $305 is pretty good. That being said, power first baseman with low averages um, on a crappy team, I'm probably staying away from the $305. Uh, there is potential, though, that he really pops off and hits you know 35 home runs this year. And then uh, that price could definitely go up. So there's so there's some real risk here in like hype and appeal compared to what he actually might do with consistent playing time. And you'll have to decide on that for yourself. But a guy like Nate Lowe, for me, is not for me. So on to the NL East. And so the AL East had a pitcher. The NL East has a pitcher. And that's Sandy Alcantara. Uh, Sandy Alcantara is currently exploding. Corbin Burns, obviously, exploding. You know, if you've paid attention to me, I love the Brewers. I love Corbin Burns. I talked about him a couple videos ago, and Corbin Burns has not disappointed. Well, Sandy Alcantara, right there with him. 12 innings, a 1.50 ERA, six hits and four walks on the year in 12 innings. Again, that's under a one whip, which is walks hits per inning pitched. Anything under one is absolutely amazing, and that's what he's got going on so far in the early going. I got a hair on my tongue and 17 K's to go along with those 12 innings, which is really, really good. If that continues out, um, you know, you're looking at a 200 strikeout guide for 170 innings, which is incredible. And I don't know if anybody's going to throw more than like 170 innings this year, considering they all threw so many, so few innings last year. Um, the big thing about Sandy Alcantara is his fastball is up, especially on his sinker, his sinker, uh, uh, miles per hour is up by one mile per hour. He throws like 98 now. Um, and his changeup use is up. So his changeup is really, really good. His fastball is good and his changeup is good. And he's been throwing his changeup a lot more. And that is causing him to get a lot more swinging strikes. Um, and his swinging strike rate obviously is up because of that. And all those combine to make a guy who is making the leap from merely a very good pitcher into a top 25, 20, 15, we'll see where it ends at the end of the year, type pitcher. And for $30 for a Bowman Chrome Auto, that's a pretty good deal, considering you might look up at the end of the year, Marlins are a decent team, they're back in the playoffs, potentially, um, and Sandy Alcantara is their ace, top 15 guy in the league, and people are paying 60, 70, 80 bucks for his auto. Might not happen, but for a $30 gamble, I'd rather gamble on Sandy Alcantara than a lot of guys, that's for sure. And so uh, shout out to Sandy Alcantara. Absolutely dominant start to the beginning of the year. On to the NL Central, and I cheated here a little bit, and I chose the entire Reds team. Now, I wanted to choose Corbin Burns. I really wanted to choose Corbin Burns because he's been killing it. But I can't deny what the Reds have been doing. I didn't choose just one player because the Reds, if you haven't been paying attention, they're scoring nine runs a game. And that was before today's game, which I'm recording this on Wednesday. That was before today's game where they scored 11 runs against the Pirates. So even that number is probably up. Uh, as a team, they're hitting 316 with a 400 on base and a 602 slugging. As a team, they have 1,002 OPS in the early going, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, Nick Cassianos has four home runs. Tyler Naquin, you'll remember him from the Indians for a while. He has four home runs on the early going which is something that you know nobody would have ever expected. Jonathan India, obviously they decided to call him up at the start of the year instead of manipulating his service time. Well, he's rewarded them with 10 hits in his first 21 at-bats. Really, really good for a rookie. He's playing an excellent second base. And then Nick Sanzel missed a little bit of time earlier in the season, but he is healthy, and he has five hits and 14 at-bats, including a double and a triple um, using those wheels. Uh, pretty, pretty exciting to see Nick Senzel healthy. I hope he can stay healthy for the full year. If you're looking over at the right side of the screen, you'll notice this is a Topps update, 2014 Topps update, Nick Cassiano's card, PSA 10, and this is $65. And for me, 
that is a deal. I know people don't really care about Nick Cassianos. The Reds aren't that exciting of a team. I will. I mean, they're a very good team, and I think they're going to be a very good team all year because their offense is amazing and their pitching is pretty good. Um, but you know, people just aren't that excited about Nick Cassianos, right? Well, I think they're going to be very excited about Nick Cassianos when you look up and he leads the NL in home runs. He's already at four. He plays in a band box that is a Great American Ballpark in uh, Cincinnati. And he gets to play away games in Wrigley. He gets to play away games in Miller Park or American Family Field, but I ain't calling it that. Um, just so many opportunities to play a bunch of games in small ballparks. He's going to hit 40 home runs this year. He's probably going to lead the NL in home runs. And at $65, if he leads the NL in home runs, what is that going to do for his prices? I think this is a steal. For the same price, you can get like Jordan Alvarez, which actually is a good deal too. Um, you could get three of these for the price of one Akil Badu Bowman Chrome model. Let that sink in for you for a second. So that 65 bucks feels like a great price for Nick or Nick Cassianos. And like even guys down the list, uh, Nick Senzel, if he stays healthy and is dominant. There's some good prices to be had there, too. So uh, just really exciting all across the board. And I didn't even talk about like guys like Mike Moustakis, who not a card investment-wise, but he's been doing really well in the begin early going. So the Reds, the Reds are really a team to be reckoned with. Their offense is amazing. And then last on the list, we have the NL West, and we've got Ryan McMahon. Uh, you'll know him from a couple years ago. He was a top prospect for the Rockies. He got called up in like 2017, maybe 2018. I don't remember the year. Um, but he's always had power, but he's never really put it together in the majors. Well, what do you know? Five games, 18 plate appearances, and he had he has four home runs so far, including the first three home run game of the year. And that is enough to get people excited. You don't need to do much in today's card market. All you need to do is is hit three home runs in a game, and people will pay drastic prices for your cards. I don't know if he'll continue. I expect him to have low averages. I expect him to hit for power, especially in Coors, and he'll probably have like 30 home runs this season. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets a plenty of playing time. That being said, you're looking over at his Bowman Chrome uh, base auto over here from 2013, and it's $45. Now, to put that in perspective, I looked all the way back in February, and you could have got a BGS 9.5 of the same card, for $23, so gr graded, and the same card for $22, le 22? yeah, $22 less, which is absurd. I wouldn't probably spend $45 on a Ryan McMahon card, um, but that's just me. I don't like to go after the, don't buy guys. If you're going to learn anything from this, don't buy guys off of, you know, one game's worth of hype six games worth of hype. It's just not worth it. Again, we go back to the Arstidas Aquino example, and that is just a terrible, terrible gamble that a lot of people lost money on. And there are going to be people losing money on guys like Ryan McMahon and guys like Akil Badu. That is all I have today for Dinging Corners. Um, Little recap. Obviously, there are so many guys that you could have talked about today, or I could have talked about today. You know, Otani with his 115 mile power hit and his hundred or home run and his 101 mile power fastball. Could have talked about him. Corey Seager started the year off hot. Juan Soto hit a walk off single in like his first game. Um, Ronald Acuna started his first game with two home runs. Right. So there is plenty of guys that we could have talked about, but. Uh, We'll probably do this every week and cover something at the start, something interesting, and then cover one guy from every division. I think that's probably a pretty good way to do it. Let me know on YouTube. I see your comments. I don't always respond, but I see your comments. Let me know if you like the way I'm going to be doing this or if you have any suggestions of ways you think I could improve it um, because we have a long season going forward, and I would like to you know, keep you guys up to date on card prices moving and guys that are hot and stuff. Um, or even guys that are doing bad. I I'm hesitant to do it, but we can do it if we want, if you guys want, uh, but let me know, 
let me know what you think I should do. It's been a while since I've had to do these because 2020 was so short. It's really been to, back to like 2019 that I've had to do like in-season updates here. So um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any ideas. And I will talk to you guys again on the next Dinging Corners. Thank you, everyone, for listening today and see you next time.